This cycle of 12 songs is based on the story of Parsifal's quest for the Holy Grail, as it was told in an epic poem by the Bavarian poet and knight Wolfram von Eschenbach around the turn of the 12th and 13th centuries. Wolfram's poem Parsifal opens with an account of how a great knight called Garmuret, the Angevin, is taken by his love of adventure to the African kingdom of Zazamank, where he fathers a child on the black queen Belakani. Shortly after the birth of their son Firefeats, Garmuret abandons Belakani to journey to Wales, where, as champion of a great jousting tournament, he wins the hand of Queen Herzeloide. She too gives him a son, who is called Parsifal. But once again, Garmuret grows restless and leaves to fight in a war where he is killed. Driven mad by grief, Herzeloide vows that her son will never know anything of knightly combat and warfare. She takes the infant child away to live a secluded life in the forest where Parsifal grows up utterly naive and innocent of the ways of the world. One day, however, he is entranced by the sight of three of King Arthur's knights riding through the forest and believes that he has found his destiny. In the first song, he shares his vision with his mother. determined to join the knights of King Arthur's court. Parsifal pays no heed to his mother's desperate pleading, so she dresses him in the rough clothing she has made for him, a hood for a helmet, a jerkin for a hauberk, hoping that the world's scorn will drive him back to her. She advises him always to take the advice of old men because they know how to survive, and never to ask more than kisses from any ladies he might meet. Taking her advice to heart, Parsifal rides off on their old nag, armed only with his hunter's javelin. As he rides through the wood, he comes across a grieving woman with the body of a dead knight in her arms. Her name is Siguna, and she is aware of Parsifal's identity as the true prince of the realm. I met a grieving lady in the wood. at me with sorrow in her face, the night who lay at peace in her embrace, was 
Astonished by what the lady has told him, Parsifal rides on and comes to Arthur's court, where he finds that all the king's knights are afraid to fight the Red Knight, who has challenged them to mortal combat on their lord's behalf. The knights pour scorn on the clumsy way Parsifal is dressed, on the peasant's weapon that he carries, and on his ignorant assumption that Arthur will make him a knight. Filled with innocent self-belief, the youth withstands their derision and demands that Arthur name him his champion. Impressed by his evident sincerity and courage, the king complies, and Parsifal rides out to confront the Red Knight, whose brilliant red armour he deeply covets. The Red Knight wrought his challenge out in vain. Not one among the king's knights dared to answer him. Wanting that bright red armor for my own, I demanded that the king make me his champion. The knights all cheered, I gripped my javelin. I saw the red knight gleaming in his pride. He willed his mouth and told me to be gone, I told him he must fight or be decried. He couched his last, I hurled my javelin. It struck, he fell. I watched in horror. Appalled by what he has done, Parsifal rides away from Arthur's court, dressed now in the Red Knight's armour over the rough clothes his mother had made for him. As he rides, he encounters an old man out hawking who offers him shelter for the night. When he discovers Parsifal's identity, the man reveals himself as Herzeloida's faithful old marshal, Gornemans, and kneels before him as his true prince. He vows to train Parsifal in all the arts of knightly combat and succeeds in doing so. But when he grows weary of the youth's constant eager questioning, he gives him some advice which will later have fateful consequences. This armor that I wear is red as blood. Above the rough smock that my But I remain a green knight underneath. My mind is wilder than a woodland glade, and still my shamed heart shudders to recall 
The jeering of the knights in Arthur's hall. And yet this old man bends his knee to me and calls me prince and vows that he will teach me all he knows of chivalry. He says a true knight never shows his ignorance. And therefore I will ask no questions. But I will trust and value his experience. Once he has mastered all the arts of war, Parsifal rides off to the aid of the young queen Blanche Fleur, whose citadel at Belle Repair is under siege and about to fall. Victorious in combat against the leader of the besieging host, Parsifal relieves the city, where he and Blanche Fleur fall deeply in love with one another. But his mother's advice that he should ask no more than kisses from a lady means that their marriage gets off to a timid start until Blanche Fleur understands what is happening and leads him deeper into love. Parsifal has now won both a good and beautiful wife and the reputation of being one of the world's most glorious knights. All seems well with his world, but after a blissful time together, he and Blanche Fleur decide that his mother must be brought out of the forest to live with them at Belle Repair and share their joy. Parsifal rides away in search of her, but quickly finds himself traveling through the desolate terrain of a waste land. Soon losing all sense of direction, he loosens his grip on his horse's reins, trusting it to guide him through the grey dream of those wastes. Eventually he is brought to the shore of a mere, where he sees a figure fishing from a boat, and asks if there is a place where he might shelter for the night. He is given directions to a house which rises from the mist around him, and proves to be the enchanted castle of the Grail. Parsifal is warmly welcomed there, and during the course of a banquet is given the rich gift of a sword by Anfortas, the Grail King, who is evidently suffering from a grievous wound. Powerful mysteries then unfold before Parsifal's astonished and uncomprehending eyes. I 
saw an old man fishing. I saw an old man fishing on the mere. I saw a castle rising. I saw a castle rising through the Inside its hall I saw, inside its hall I saw a fool who dressed me, me rudely as a woman, me rudely as a woman for the feast. I heard the At his word, a young page offered me a sword. I saw a lance. I saw a lance from which blood streamed, and still more strangely. Still more strangely than as if I dreamed, I saw a maiden lift a grail in offering, and though I heard the old king suffering, I failed to ask the reason. I failed to ask the reason for his signs or what the meaning or what the meaning of these mysteries. Remembering the advice of his mentor, Gornemans Parsifal had chosen not to reveal his ignorance by asking questions. But cries of lamentation follow his failure to speak. The grail withdraws from his sight and he retires to bed weary and bewildered. When he wakes the next day, he finds the castle deserted. As he leaves, a voice condemns him as a heartless fool crying that the land remains waste because he has not put the question. Shamed by the rebuke and still more deeply bewildered, Parsifal rides away. Once more he encounters the Lady Siguna, who is still holding the corpse of her lover. She listens in incredulity while he confesses that he has failed the quest of the Grail. She warns him that the sword which he has been given will break in the hour of need. And then she too accuses him of heartlessness, both for not asking the cause of the Grail King's suffering and for abandoning his mother to die of a broken heart alone in the forest. Appalled by this terrible revelation, Parsifal rides away in a turmoil of guilt and despair so grave that it leaves him half crazed in the weeks that follow. Snow falls across the land. One day he watches a falcon strike at a passing skein of geese. Three drops of blood fall onto the snow, entrancing Parsifal with a vision of his wife's beauty. It is a love trance from which he is woken only by the shout of a knight's voice, challenging him to combat. Three drops of blood shine on the snow. My mind turns to you, the queen of my heart. This blood is so Snow, the world has so 
A shout calls me back. I must fight, must just for my aching heart. Will let nothing keep me from returning to you. The queen Parsifal defeats his challenger, who turns out to be one of a party of hawkers led by King Arthur. Now famous before all the world as a gallant and noble knight, Parsifal is taken to Arthur's court for the Christmas celebrations. But he is still filled with guilt and confusion, and longs only to return to his wife. But that becomes impossible once the sorceress Kundri rides into the hall, cursing him before all the assembled company as a heartless fool. You left the king to suffer from his wound. You left your mother grieving as she died. Your foolish heart lacks feeling and the land lies waste because of you. She Innocence in vain, consumed by grief, condemned by Kundri's curse. I turned on God and blamed him for this pain. There is no meaning in the universe. Ashamed to return to his wife, Parsifal leaves Arthur's court denouncing the God that had brought him to this humiliating condition and refusing to serve him. Even though Kundri has warned him that the castle of the Grail withholds itself from those who have failed its ordeals, he wanders for years, searching to return to that place without success and growing ever more bitter, ever more despairing. Reins hang loose to 
having put his trust in his horse to guide him rather than his own stubborn will, Parsifal is led at last to the cell of the hermit Trevrizent, who offers him shelter for the night. As they talk by the fire, the hermit persuades Parsifal to explain the causes of his grief. It emerges that Trevrizent is Parsifal's uncle on his mother's side and brother to the Grail King and Fortas. Trevrizent tells Parsifal that the Grail is a stone that was brought down to earth by the neutral angels who refused to take sides between God and the powers of darkness when there was a war in heaven. The stone which holds together the powers of both darkness and light was placed in the keeping of the Grail family. But Anfortas took his grave wound when he followed his own passionate desires rather than serving the Grail. That wound can be healed only when a seeker after the Grail puts the right question, and until then the land will lie waste. When Parsifal confesses to Trevrizent that he has already failed once in the quest, he is told that he will succeed only when he comes to the realization that he too has a dark and yet unrecognized shadow side which must be understood and assimilated. He too must learn to hold both darkness and light together if he is ever to be whole. After a long time of prayer and meditation with Trevrizent, Parsifal goes forth on his quest again. Eventually he returns to Arthur's court where Kundri, 
who is now a much more sympathetic figure, counsels him that a final battle awaits him before he can achieve the Grail. On his way to the Grail Castle, he finds his way blocked by a dark knight in Saracen gear who challenges him to fight. Neither knight is willing to yield, and their combat proves long and desperate. Parsifal is about to kill the Saracen when the sword, which he had been given by the Grail King, breaks. Disarmed, he prepares himself for death. But the Dark Knight has been impressed by his courage and asks to know his name. When Parsifal declares himself to be the son of Garmoret the Angevin, his astonished opponent tells him that his own name is Firefeats and that he too is Garmoret's son, though by a different mother, Queen Belakani. Reconciled as brothers, the two knights advance joyfully together to the castle of the Grail. I did not know you as my shadow When I you stood beneath your banner In the gorge beside the water That will take me to the grail I had had my fill of fighting Yet swore still of shore Mercy of the sword the Grail King gave me had not shattered at your hand. But as I lay struck down beneath you and waited for the death blow, it was then you raised my courage and asked to know my name. Then we found we had one father and that you were my dark brother. So we made our way together to the castle of the grave. Now that he is united with his dark brother, a very different welcome awaits Parsifal at the Grail Castle. This time, deeply moved by the suffering of Anfortas, he does not fail to ask about the cause and nature of his pains. And at the words, What ails thee, uncle? The Grail appears, the wound is healed, and the wasteland begins to grow green again. Having at last become a whole person in whom innocence and experience are reconciled, now that courage, compassion and understanding have been brought together, Parsifal is acknowledged as true heir to the Grail and reunited with his beloved wife, Kondwiramuz. Oh. 
forth its light, and all the court rejoices. Now the barren land grows green again and flourishes, for I have found the 